Okay, so today I'm going to be doing my October TBR. I haven't filmed in a while, a good few weeks, so I'm a little bit out of practice. Not that I was ever amazing, but just a little bit rusty. I have never done a formal monthly TBR before. I don't necessarily plan out the books I want to read. I do have like a running list of everything I would like to read or books pop up, but I never really do a monthly TBR because I am a mood reader. But I feel like as we approach the end of the year, there are a lot of books that have been on my shelves that really fit either the spooky part of the season or just the autumnal cozy part of the season. So it's an excuse to read some of those that maybe I wouldn't pick up um, outside of the season because they just don't really fit. So that's the plan. Not all of these books are like traditionally horror or like thrillers that a lot of people read because um, it's not a genre I'm super well um, versed in. I've tried a few. I've loved, like I'm thinking of ending things by Ian Reid, really disliked some Riley Sagers, so I feel like I'm still finding my footing there. But we have some that for me, I'm interested in that kind of sort of fit the mood. So let's just start. First up, we have a, uh, I don't know, my, are my ears sticking out? Whatever. Um, we have a booktube bookstagram favorite. That sounds like I would really love it. And that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. So this is beloved by many. I know it has like a spooky, strange, mystical vibe and atmosphere. So it's, the blurb is very interesting. The circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there when yesterday it was not. Within the black and white striped canvas tents, it is an utterly unique experience full of breathtaking amazements. It is called the Cirque de Reves, and it is only open at night. But behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway. A duel between two young magicians, Celia and Marco, who have been trained since childhood expressly for this purpose by their mercurial instructors. Um, but notes to both of them, this is a game in which only one will be left standing. So it does have the mystery elements, but it does feel just like a really fun, whimsical book. And I know that it is a favorite of many. So I'm really, really excited about this. It's kind of a big one, but we'll see. I also have not been reading as many books per month as I was earlier in the year, just because of other things going on. But I do have a few long car rides planned for the month of October where hopefully I can read more than I have been. So I'm going into this being hopeful, but there is no guarantee that I will read all of these, but it's worth mentioning them anyway. Then we have one that I am a little bit torn about, <laughs> and that is 112263 by Stephen King. So you might know that I have dabbled into King, into his work. I've read the Shining, Carrie, um, Misery, and The Outsider. I think that's it. Really disliked The Outsider, but enjoyed the other three. Um, and I have Doctor Sleep on my shelves, which is like the second book to The Shining. Um, but it doesn't have great reviews as far as I've seen. But this sounds really interesting. It is a freaking tome because he doesn't edit down his work at all. Um, but it sounds interesting. Life can turn on a dime or stumble into the extraordinary as it does for Jake Epping, a high school English teacher in Maine in a Maine town. While grading essays for his GED students, Jake reads a gruesome and thrilling piece penned by a janitor, Harry Dunning. Fifty years ago, Harry somehow survived his father's sledge ham slaughter of his entire family. Jake is blown away, but an even more bizarre secret comes to light when comes to light when Jake's friend Al, owner of the local diner, enlists Jake to take on the mission that has become his obsession to prevent the Kennedy assassination. But how? And then there's a portal and weird things happen. So I'm not always in the mood for King, but I feel like I will not just pick this up on a whim. It's big. <laughs> and um, I have been known to uh, get bored with King's books just because there's a lot of extra pages that sometimes, at least to me, feel unnecessary. But I feel like it's now or never. So I'm going to try it. It's big. If I had time for it, it's on my list. I really hope to read it, and it will give me that, like, classic horror. Then we have one that I'm very, very excited about. I got it for my birthday, which was in May, 
and I just haven't picked it up, but it feels fitting for the season. And that is Helen Oyemi's White is for Witching. This is probably the one I'm most excited about in this stack. It sounds fantastic. Um, it is a haunted house trip or adjacent. Something strange. Oh, there's something strange about the Silvers family house in the closed off town of Dover, England. Grand and carnivorous, cavernous, mm, oops, with hidden passages and buried secrets, it's been home to four generations of silver women. Anna, Jennifer, Lily, and now Miranda have lived in the house with her twin brother Elliot ever since their father converted it into a bed and breakfast. The silver women always have a strong connection and pull over one another that reaches across time and space. So it, Miranda, the girl who lives in this home, starts suffering from strange ailments and an eating disorder starves her and she begins hearing voices. So it, Dover's hostility comes to life within this house. So this sounds fantastic. I've seen very good reviews of it and this has like the haunted house trope. So I'll just get like my little dab of that. Dip my toe into the trope. Um, then we have, so this is not horror in any way but it is a very very dark book and I don't know that I would just pick it up on a whim because it I think will be a very challenging book to read but I feel like it's one that I've had on my TBR for a really long time so I feel like now is the, a good time to read it in between my other books and that is hurricane season so if you've heard anything about this you know that it has divided the masses some people think it's exploitative and really brutally violent without a good reason. Some people think that the writing and the storytelling is really, really incredible. So it is, I'll just read you the blurb because that's what we're doing here. The witch is dead and the discovery of her corpse has the whole village investigating the murder as the novel unfolds in a dazzling linguistic torrent with each unreliable narrator lingering on new details. Melker, um, Fernando Melker, Melkor um, extracts some tiny shred of humanity from these characters and creates a swirling portrait of a damned Mexi Mexican village. So, even just opening this book, it's like there's no paragraph breaks, which is slightly intimidating. <laughs> um, but I really want to read it. I know Grace really loved it. So we will see where I land on that. Then, we have one from an author that I just recently purchased another book from. This is another book by Samantha, Samantha Schweblin. I can never say her last name. So I just read, a few weeks ago, I read her short story collection, Mouthful of Birds, and they weren't all a hit, but some of them, I mean, I talk about it, I will talk about it in my wrap up, but some of them were so good that I just like immediately wanted to pick up more from this author, even though all the stories as a whole weren't fantastic, but some really stood out. And those stories, I don't know if you've read that collection, do have a horror element to them. They were, they were disturbing. They were a little bit gruesome. Um, so this is, um, they've infiltrated homes in Hong Kong, shops in Vancouver, the streets of Sierra Leone, they're everywhere. But how can a person living in Berlin walk freely through the living room of someone in Sydney? Walk freely through the living room of someone, I'm getting confused. How can someone in Bangkok have breakfast with your children in Buenos Aires without your knowing? The characters in Samantha Schweblin's Little Eyes reveals the beauty of connection between far-flung souls while exposing the ugly side of our increasingly linked world. So it's dark and complex. So it does sound like it has strange and weird and maybe scary going on. Um, it sounds like Exit West, where there's like portals and you could travel between different places unbeknownst. Um, also a good cover. Then we have one that I'm very excited about and you won't be surprised. I have read this um, blurb before on this channel, but it feels autumnal. And you could say it's not autumnal, but it's like, you know, like Pride and Prejudice feels autumnal because, you know, Pemberley just gives off that vibe. Well, I'm saying that this is autumnal. <laughs> um, this is A Peculiar Peril by Vandermeer. And on the back, it literally just says the book is not normal. Warning, this book is not normal. I'm so excited. So, this does fit into the October season and mood because it is about a strange and mysterious home. I will read a little bit of the blurb again. So, it's a strange and wonder-filled epic about a young man named Jonathan who inherits his dead father's overstuffed mansion with a veritable cabinet of curiosities. So, he goes to um, 
go through all these strange things in this mysterious house and apparently shit hits the fan. There's power, um, has seized power on a magic-fueled rampage across a through-the-looking-glass version of Europe replete with talking animals and vegetables. Um, so I don't think I need to know more going in, but this feels really autumnal and I know I talk about it a lot, but Born and Dead Astronauts is like still running through my mind, so I'm very excited about it. And then we have a classic, which I'm not like itching to pick up, but I do have it on my shelves and I'll never pick it up outside of October. We have Dracula. So I have never read Dracula. I feel like I know the story just from popular culture, but that's what I thought about Frankenstein, and there was actually a lot that I didn't know about the, the origin story. So I feel like I will still be surprised by this one. Um, it's a cute little like mass market paperback. I'm very interested. So it's written in the form of letters and diary entries, which sometimes I like, sometimes I don't like, but I feel like it will give me um, the October vibes because very few other things are like blatantly attached to the season. So I feel like, you know, it's now or never. And I, I am excited to read this one. If you've read this, let me know if it's actually like a classic that stands up. Because sometimes you can read a classic that like to study it is great, but to actually read it on your own without reading like a lot of conversation and dialogue around it or like doing a lot of research about what people smarter than myself have said about this book. It doesn't always hit the spot just by yourself, but we'll see. Let me know if you've actually enjoyed it. Then we have one that is not at all spooky, but for me, like the last few months of the year, it's like getting colder and for some reason I want like comfort reads. And for me, that has always been historical fiction and or little women. But um, my mom gave this to me a little while ago and that is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. So I think people really love this one. It is about, sh okay, it's about the plague. Not super joyful. England, 1580, the Black Death creeps across the land, an ever-present threat infecting the healthy, the sick, the old, and the young alike. The end of days is near, but life always goes on. So I thought this was about Shakespeare's son. Um, Stratford-upon-Avon, yes, okay. So I think it is about his son, and I know that CJ loved this, which is shocking because she doesn't traditionally love historical fiction, so I feel like I will also really enjoy it. Um, yeah, I just love historical fiction, especially this time of year. And then we have one more, last one on my TBR, that is, again, not super spooky, but it is autumnal. Hear me out on this. That is Underland, another one that I just hauled in my most recent video. Um, this is a nonfiction book about undergrounds, <laughs> about nature. It is about caves and glaciers and hidden parts of mines. What else? Um, and Rachel said that for some reason that I do not yet know that this is perfect for the season. And it does kind of sound, sound a little spooky, like reading about, you know, the underlands that we don't really think about on a day-to-day -day basis, or at least I don't. Um, darkness, burial, and what lies beneath the surface. So, I think it will be fun to kind of read, like, it's like the overstory, which I said before. So, that is the end of my hopefully quick October TBR. I don't have too many recommendations for you, because like I said, I'm not someone who reads a lot of horror, or a lot of thrillers even. The few thrillers that I have read, I haven't been super impressed with. Like, I've read some Paula Hawkins, like I said, Riley Sager, and it's just, the writing doesn't always hold up for me. Um, but, I'm thinking of any things about Ian Reid. Oh, My Sister the Serial Killer, which is not horror, but it is slightly horrifying and it's also fantastic and it does read like a thriller. It's super quick and like really entertaining. Um, what else? Pride and Prejudice, like I said, it does give you the autumn feel. What else? Um, oh, Ton of French. What am I saying? I do love Ton of French. Oh, and Pew has kind of a autumnal, spooky vibe. The Lottery, you might say, by Shirley Jackson. Um, so those are my, you know, I don't have a lot of great recommendations, but that's what I can offer you. Um, but I'm very, very excited about this, specifically White is for Witching and A Peculiar Peril, but who's surprised there. Um, let me know what you're reading in October. If you have, if you've read any of these, no spoilers, of course, but let me know what you thought specifically about Dracula, if I should actually read it, if it's worth my time. 
because maybe it's just like the sizing and proportions of this but it looks really thick if it was like you know normal height it might not look so big but it looks a little bit long for me and there are some other long books in this stack but like i said some long car rides we have like two five hour car rides two seven hour car rides and i know sometimes i'm gonna have to be driving but when i'm not hopefully i can do a lot of reading um but yes let me know what you were reading in october if you've read any of these what i should prioritize in case they can't get through them all yeah let me know and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you very soon in my next video bye everyone